Yo, what's up guys? My name is Farza, and today we're going to be talking about arrays. So, why would we even need an array? What is an array even? We don't even know yet. So, let's think back to our video about variables. When we were learning about, um, when we use re as an example, remember we made variables for re's damages? So, we did like int req damage equals this, equals something, like 12. Uh, int w damage equals something like 50 and we did this for each of her skills right we did this for q w e and r and each of those variables represented the damage that 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 that, that, that skill did so imagine if we had to do this for like 20 champions where we had to make variables for each of the 20 champion skills and figure out their damages and store it like that in individual variables can you see how that can get redundant and unorganized very quickly because 20, like if you have 20 champions and they each have four variables, that's already 80 variables that you have to work with. And that is a lot of, that's a lot of variables. That's, that's no fun. That, can you imagine like just writing out 80 variables? It sounds like a lot of work and it doesn't sound like it's very, it doesn't sound like it's very sophisticated. So as programmers, we want to figure out the most, the nicest way and most organized way to store our data. And in this situation, we're going to use something called an array. And an array has many uses and many types, but we're going to talk about one of the simplest uses and types today. And it's called an, an integer array. So an array is type specific, meaning you can have arrays of floats, arrays of characters, but today we're only going to focus on arrays of integers. And they're called int arrays, where basically they hold, they hold only ints, right? Now, I feel like arrays are pretty easy to wrap your mind around once you actually can visualize it. Imagine an array to be this big long box, and this long box has these little compartments, and each compartment has data that you can grab and actually pull out and mess with. I like to think of them as like variables, like just a bunch of variables in a row, but that might not work for you guys. So I've drawn out this box here, and this is an, this is an array, let me take these little numbers out here, this is an array of size 4, meaning it has 1, 2, 3, 4 little compartments, right? And in the first compartment, it has some data. In the second compartment, it has some data. And remember, these, this is an int array. So this would be an int, this would be an int, this would be an int, and this would be an int. So in our first compartment, we have this piece of data. We have no idea what it is right now. It could be anything, because we, we're, just, we're just talking about it abstractly right now. And in the, other com in the second compartment, we have this. In the third compartment, we have this piece of data. And, and so on. They could go on. An array can be as big as you want it to be. I mean, of course, there are some limitations once you go into higher level programming. But for now, just think of an array as like this. It can be as big as you want for now. All right. So let's just start. Let's just start with it. Right. Um, so I brought up the example of Ari where, you know, her we wanted to store each of her each of her damages in a specific variable. Well, let's do that same thing. But let's let's choose. Let's choose a different champion. Let's let's do it with Echo. Right. So let's make an integer array for uh, Echo's damages. And the way we declare an array, so at this point, this is how you declare an integer variable, right? To declare an integer array is very simple. You simply put this little, these square brackets, all right? But then we have to do, we have one more step here. We have to specify the size of our array, okay? So Echo has one, two, three, four skills, right? So we're going to need four spots in our array to store our values. So that's our, our, our array is going to be of size four. And let me just lay out over here in the comments section how I'm going to do it. So Q, so each index of the array is going to store a, a ver a, the, the, the damage that that skill does, right? So the first index is going to store this, the other index is going to store this. And the index of, this, of, the, uh, of the array will correlate with what skill um, Echo is using, right? So, for example, the uh, the last index will hold his R damage, right? Cool. So now we have to talk about how the numbering systems in arrays work, because I've been totally honest with you at this point. So, this is how it works. Computers count from zero up. So, this is an array of size four, right? We declare this up here. This is this is how this array looks right now in memory. Not really. That's how. That's little talk. That's. This is how this array looks right now abstractly, right? Abstractly, this array looks like this, where we have four spots, 
And they have some random values in them right now. We have no idea what the values are right now. And it's just, it's just there, right? It's, it has no use right now. But let's talk about the numbering system. How exactly are these numbered? So even though this is the first compartment, computers count from zero up. So this is actually made the zeroth um, compartment. And you know, I'm just using the word index, and that's the same thing as me saying compartment, but index is the actual term for you know, this spot in the array. And once again, that, that word's index. So now let's move on. This is actually going to be the first index of our array. This is going to be the second index of our array. This is going to be the third index of our array. So we have four spots in our array. One, two, three, four. But our computer counts from zero up. So this is technically the zeroth spot, the first spot, the second spot, and the third spot. So at this point, there is no fourth spot. If, since we count from zero up, we already have four spots since we counted from zero, one, two, three. And that's a pretty easy concept to understand, I think. Computers count a little differently. So as long as you understand that zero counts as an index, and it's not just, it's not starting from one, it's starting from zero, you'll be fine. So let's populate this array, right? Like you can see that this array is filled with nothing right now. We want to fill it with stuff. We want to fill it with echoes skills. So let's start with echoes queue. Um, echo damages. So this is how you actually put something in your array, okay? So we want to put something in the zeroth index of our array. So we're simply going to say array index at zero is equal to something, and we're going to put you know echoes q damage, which I don't know what it is, but I'm just going to say it's forty. Now let's do something. Now let's do something else. Let's do the echo echo w. So echoes w, if you play league, does not do damage, right? It's just a stun and it's a shield. So it does zero damage. Easy. Now we just go on, right? Now we're going to do echo, echo E. And that's going to be echo damages at uh, array sub 2, right? Because if we're going to go Q, let's pretend like this is uh, this Q. Oh, this Q. Pretend like this is this W. Um, oh, I have caps lock on. My bad. This W. Uh, his E is, this, is the second one. And finally, his, his, uh, his R. This is, how, this is not how arrays... Your array can work however you want, but this is how I'm choosing to show you guys how it works. So now to store his E damage, we're going to go to the second index, right? Because Q, W, E. That's, a, that's the third index, which is 0, 1, 2. The third compartment, which is actually the second compartment, because since we count from 0 up. So that is going to equal whatever you want, right? I'm going to make it 30. I'm just guessing here. And finally, we have echoes R, which goes in the final index of our array. So echo damages at index sub at array sub three is going to equal 50. And now we have populated our array with values we actually care about. So now, if we look back uh, to our little example down here, these numbers are going to be 40, 0. I'm going to put two zeros here just because the formatting of this thing is a little weird. 30 and 50. OK. I'm actually move this up here, taking up some space. Now oh, whatever, it's fine there. So can you see here that uh, array sub 0, 1, 2, 3, f and that correlates perfectly to this array. This is how our array looks right now in our computer. Um, there's a value at, at sub zero, index sub 0, index at index sub 1, index sub 2, and index sub 3. So I like to think of these. I like to think of these as variables, right? These are basically just integer variables, and they're holding integer, you know, values, right? So let's treat them like integer variables. Let's print something out. Let's uh, let's print out echo q damage is equal to percent d because we're still going to pull out a value from somewhere, right? And it's going to be an integer value. But what do we put now for our specification? So we can't just put echo damage, right? Echo damages is an array. It's, it's a bunch of integers. It's like a row of integers. We have to specify what integer we're talking about so it can grab out the right integer, so it can go to the right, it can go to the right index and pull out the correct value. So in this case, we want to go to the zeroth index and pull out this 40, so we grab our Q. So echo damages is zero. And this should work. Hopefully it didn't mess up anywhere. It should build properly. And let me comment this out here as well. This will actually mess up our program. And let's check it out. Let's see if it works. 
And there we go. We get echo Q damage equals 40, which is exactly what we want. And remember how I said that you can basically see this as variables? Well, if, if, if it's a variable, I should be able to change its value, right? And yes, these values here, they're not set in stone. You can change the value of an array to whenever you want. So I can be like echo damages at zero is now equal to, I don't know, what, 50 or 100, what, <laughs> 90. There we go. And um, if I copy this, copy and paste this here, I'm also going to put a backslash n right here. Remember, that skips a line. So it'll make our output look a little nicer. Now we should see this. Oh, what I do? Uh, echo damages, right? Yeah, this should be an S. Always spell your variables correctly and your array names. So now you can see that echo damages, echo key damages equals, equals 40, but then it equals 90 since we changed the value right here. So this is a very simple example. Oh, that's OBS. This is a very simple example of an array. And, you know, they have many uses. And as long as you understand some little things, let's do a, like, a quick review of this. Let me uncomment this out. Whoa. So probably the most important thing to understand is this is an array of size 4. OK? But since we're counting up from 0, it doesn't have four indexes. It has three. It has a total of three indexes. Or it goes to the highest index it goes to is three because we count from zero. It got it goes zero, one, two, three. It still has four compartments, but since it starts counting from zero, we're sort of looking at four. Uh, we're sort of looking at like we're sort of looking behind it, right? So instead of like if you think of it like as the first compartment is actually one, the first compartment, first compartment minus one, which is actually the zeroth compartment, the zeroth index. Then the first index, then the second index, and the third index. So, let me see if there's anything else I can cover here. And I think I'm gonna actually look. We're actually gonna talk about another type of an array, of another type of array next video called a character array, which basically has to do with strings, like English words, like actual letters, not just numbers, right? Because this is an integer array. Remember how I said there's many different types. This is just an integer array. This just holds integer values, but there is a whole galaxy of arrays that we can look into. And that will be next video, so stay tuned. And I'll see you guys later.